goodness. I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe for more of that. Hey, make sure to subscribe for more of that. Why haven't you done that? Watching all my videos ain't subscribed. Come on. Anyway, today we're talking about render settings and science. Scientific America. Or wherever you live. What are the best render settings for YouTube? Well, why don't we just find out? Long story short, every time I post a render settings video, I get comments like, well, actually, if you were to uh, up the bit rate, or actually, this is way too high of a bit rate, or actually, if you were to upscale, or actually, if you blah, 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 blah. Well, I decided to put an end to all of that and actually test out the best settings for a YouTube video in Resolve 17. So if you want the answer, it's coming. But first, some science! 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 So, I set out to answer that question, what are the best settings for YouTube out of DaVinci Resolve? And really the only way that you can actually test this is render the same video with a whole bunch of different settings and upload it to YouTube a bunch of times and then look at each of those and compare them. So what I did was made sure each of them were playing in the highest quality and I captured the screen with a really high quality recorder so that it didn't add a bunch of compression or anything. And then I brought it into Resolve and pixel peeped and went crazy for a good, a good while. <sighs> did that quite a bit. But I did find out some interesting stuff. I can pair details on skin tones and hair, little details like foliage, see how well low contrast colors gradate, how blotchy things seem to be. I looked at details and textures, stuff with low motion, stuff with high motion. I tried to get just a big general idea of how each codec and how each setting actually performs in the real world. Not just theory, not just on a certain type of footage, but just all around. And I won't take you through the hundreds of comparisons I actually did. I'll give you the too long didn't read, right? And I'll show you the differences on this uh, gameplay clip because that's where the differences seem to be the most apparent. Things with not a whole lot of motion, something like this shot, you don't see a real big difference, honestly, between the codecs. You don't see a huge difference with the higher bit rates. It all looks real similar. But where you do see a huge difference is with footage that has a lot of motion and a lot of detail. One of the codecs that I rendered was DNX HR, which is a very high quality codec that YouTube accepts. And it makes sense that this would look really nice because it's not compressed as much as very nice, very light compression. This is a kind of codec that you would use to like archive your film and that kind of thing. So it really should give us the best shot for quality. And it pretty much did. These were far and above the best looking uploads, but the size is huge. It's like 10 times the size of the other codecs we tested H.264 and H.265. So is it worth it? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the next one I did a lot of testing on is H.264, tested different data rates. And as you can imagine, if we switch back and forth in between DNxHR and H.264, H.264 is a lot more blocky. DNxHR, you can see a lot of these little details a little better. They're a little bit chunky anyway, but everything's kind of just smoothed out in a way that eh, may or may not be exactly what you want when it comes to the H.264. H.265 had actually similar results to DNxHR. It looks very similar at the higher data rates. And just for an HD upload, H.265 definitely seems to be uh, just about as good as DNxHR if it's rendered at, you know, 50 or 60 megabits per second. Where it really gets interesting though, is when you upscale. This is the same exact clip, it's recorded in HD, but this is just an HD upload. This is a UHD upscaled upload. Look at the difference. It absolutely blew my mind. It, I did not think it would be that big of a difference, but it really is. And even though it's the same source footage, it seems like YouTube gives it maybe a higher data rate on the compression that it adds, which might end up making this look so much better. Throughout this whole test, everything that is upscaled to UHD looks better across the board than something that's uploaded in HD. Again, same exact source footage. It's no comparison. UHD upscale, definitely worth it. So after I kind of figured that out, I did a whole bunch more tests with the codex. Of course, DNX HR looks the best, and H.264 at pretty high data rates looks similar but you do get like some of the details back here smoothed out a little bit with H.264, which may or may not be a big deal to some people. Depending on the shot, you can notice a small difference or a big difference in some of the details, and especially like things that don't have a whole lot of contrast uh, get kind of blocky with 
H.264. And that totally makes sense because that's just how that compression works. Now, when you get to H.265, you almost can't tell the difference between H.265 and DNxHR. You just about can't tell the difference, which is interesting because DNxHR, like this upload right here, this DNxHR is two and a half gigs for 30 seconds, and H.265 at these settings is 224 megabytes. So it's much, much smaller. It's about 10 times smaller for just about the same quality after it's uploaded to YouTube and converted and all that stuff. If you really did do some pixel peeping, like you really got in close, you can see a difference, right? Like you can see a difference between the two, but is that practically going to matter? I would say probably not. I would say you get just a tiny more detail with DNxHR. It's a little bit blockier with the H.265. But now if we boost up the megabits per second, with H.265, because that was at 60 megabits per second. Here we have 100 megabits per second. And all the tests I've found, around 100 megabits per second or more looks almost exactly like DNxHR for like an eighth of the file size. And of course, H.264 compared to H.265, it's like no contest. H.265 at the same megabits per second versus H.264. H.264 is like noticeably worse. You can really tell like here in the lines, this line's sharp, this line is kind of bleh. And I know this example is kind of not quite synced, but I've played with this a lot and believe me, it's a big, big difference between those two, especially at the lower bit rates. Now, a couple things that I learned about rendering H.265 is that on Windows, this is only available on the studio version. So you do have to upgrade to studio in order to render H.265. But the good news is if you have a Mac, it actually has the ability in the free version. And apparently this is because of complicated licensing things and I don't know. But if you're on Windows, you have to upgrade to studio. If you're using the free version, I would still recommend probably H.264 up-res to UHD at a similar data rate. That's still going to be pretty good quality, but if you do have the studio version or if you're on a Mac, the H.265 looks great. So let's take a look at some scientific findings, shall we, after doing all of these tests? Here's some scientific findings. Which codec should I use? Uh, these are the three that I tested. I know there are more codecs. There, I'm sure I'll get comments about why didn't I test whatever codec, but these were the ones that I thought probably had the best shot of being really useful. And we found, not surprisingly, DNx HR very nice, but huge files. H.264 has low file size, but it also has low quality. And the H.265 is almost DNxHR quality when you have it at the higher bit rates, but it's about the size of H.264. It's actually a little smaller most of the time. And I found that at least on my system, H.265 renders about twice as fast. So it's kind of the clear winner here. It looks better. It's a smaller file size and it renders faster. Why wouldn't you use that? So H.265 seems to be the way to go. One big thing that surprised me how much of a difference it made is upscaling content. So should I upscale my content to UHD even if it's shot in HD? Yes, it 100% makes a huge difference if you can do it, if you can afford the render time, if your system can do it, if you can upload a little bigger file, if you're looking for quality, that is the way to get it. The other thing I tested a lot, which we didn't have a bunch of examples in this video, but believe me, this is what I found. Higher bit rates look nicer. Pretty much the higher you go, it always looks nicer, but it starts to get only just negligibly nicer when you get to about twice the frame rate in megabits. This is in H.265 at UHD. So at 24 frames a second, if you were gonna render something at like 10,000 kilobits, it looks just okay. 25 looks a lot better and 50 looks a lot better than that, but you know, 50 versus 100, not a huge difference. Similar for 30p, the higher the bit rate, the better it looks until around 60 or so. And then it just kind of seems like overkill. Same thing for 60p, around 100, 120 or so, that's about the sweet spot between it actually making a difference. I did one test at H.265 UHD at 60p at 100 megabits per second versus 150, and you just, I mean, you can't tell the difference practically but you can tell the difference between 100 and 50. So I'd say this is about where the sweet spot is, is about twice the frame rate. So that's a nice easy way to remember it. So if we're gonna render a movie for YouTube from DaVinci Resolve, here's what I would recommend. Like I've suggested in previous videos, what I like to do is switch to the YouTube preset and then back to custom, but I'm gonna scroll down, leave the format at QuickTime, and under codec, we're gonna switch to H.265. This again is for a 1080p project. Resolution, I would go to Ultra HD, even if stuff is HD, upscale it to Ultra HD. Of course, if you have an Ultra HD timeline, this is a great choice. And then for quality, for H.264, I've recommended 30,000 in 
the past, and that does look pretty good. But after all of these findings and science and stuff, and since we're rendering Ultra HD, we want to do about double our frame rate. So whatever our frame rate is for the project, this is 24 frames, do about 50. Or you could do 47.9999 or whatever if you want to. But about twice, you could go 60, somewhere in there. I'm going to leave that at 50,000, and everything else is pretty much fine by default. So when you're ready, just go ahead and click Add to Render Queue. And this thing will pop up and it'll say, are you sure you want to upscale your stuff? Like, are you like, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, man. And you say, yep, I'm going to add it because we know, we know, don't we? We sure do. And that's going to give you the best looking YouTube render for an HD project in the year 2020, 2021 with DaVinci Resolve 17. See, I told you there'd be science. I told you. Anyway, these are the best settings that I've found, but of course, if you have other opinions, you can use the internet to share them without fear of being judged or having to be nice. Here's more videos on Resolve 17, and I just think that you look nice today. Mm. See, if you want a good pickup line, be like, babe, you look like you were upscaled to UHD. <laughs> uh, that's how I met my wife. No, it's not. It was a pity date.